a special guest who is going to talk to us about how you can be able to monetize you, uh, your knowledge and this is something that you already have, but there is a structure or framework that you can be able to follow. She's an expert in that area. So without further ado, in the chat, give me all those fire emojis, thumbs up as we welcome Coach Betty Mwaora. Welcome to the show, Betty. How are you doing? I'm very well. How about yourself? I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm really excited and happy to have you this evening as we discuss everything to do with uh, monetizing your knowledge, right? Absolutely. And thanks for having me. I appreciate being in your forums and yeah. having interactions with, with your tribe. Ah, that is great. That is great. Now, for someone who probably doesn't know you, they don't know what you do, maybe I can, uh, we can start by you introducing yourself. You can tell us who you are, what you do, and anything that you'd want to add in between there before we get to the questions for today. All right. My name is Coach Betty Maura. Uh, probably we've met with uh, some of you online, physically, or wherever in this life. But if we haven't met, um, I'd like to describe myself as that person or that coach. Nowadays, I'm a bit careful with the word coach. But I'm that person that helps, <laughs> helps people to get paid for their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Having discovered that a lot of people have amazing knowledge. They have this expertise. They have ideas. They have gained very good skills, amazing skills, actually superior skills from their work environments, from their professional jobs. But then some don't monetize. Others try to, but they are not able to really, really monetize as desired. And others just get misused. <laughs> or they, you know, they, they, their reward is a cup of Java. And that really worries me. It worries me. So I, I help high achievers to package that knowledge that they have gained, professionally acquired knowledge, into sellable products. Uh, Daniel, you know, a while back, we weren't really focusing on productizing our knowledge. But now we are because... People like to buy things that they can see and touch. So the struggle was, how do I sell knowledge? So that's the journey that I've taken for the last eight years, uh, done it, <laughs> and from it, enjoyed earning from my knowledge. Felt so, so good meeting my dreams and my goals using the knowledge that I acquired as a professional. So that's what I do. And, and, th and that's what I wake up to focus on every single day. Thank you. Sorry. I think my camera just got lost here for a minute. Okay, good. We are live. That is what happens when uh, we are live. Thank you very much. I had uh, everything. Now, maybe just that has set the pace for our conversation uh, this evening. Probably what I would want to know from you is... You can share with us like a brief journey of mm. you yourself getting towards this space and becoming an expert in helping people to monetize their knowledge and what really inspired you to focus in this area thank you daniel for that it's a, it's it's yes. been a long journey but i'll i'll shorten it yeah. uh i went to campus to learn how to be a teacher for adults. <laughs> that actually means I took my degree in education mm -hmm. because my mom really wanted me to become a teacher. Okay. In those days, it, it's not today that you tell your parents, no, I'm not going to become a teacher. So those days you had to obey. But really deep down, I, I, I really didn't want to become a classroom teacher. But I liked the curriculum that came with the course I was taking at the university excited me every day, especially learning how to teach grown-ups. That, that was a focus. So, you know, learning how to do curriculum, learning how to engage grown-ups, learning how 
my best was um, psychology. The human psychology really excited me. So after campus, I decided I ain't going to teach in a classroom. I will not do that. So I actually thought I would teach in the university. And, you know, once I graduated, all years were focused on me teaching in a university. So I immediately enrolled for my master's. But then when I was enrolling for my master's, I discovered I didn't want to do those courses that were on that side of education. I found an interesting course. <laughs> that you know masters in project planning and management so i took that course i was a young girl i did i have i had money I, and i didn't have the right sense of mind to actually say i am taking this course for this reason i, I wanted to do a masters and so i made that decision so i take that course it was exciting i learned better things actually that helped me to to learn how to you know, manage projects, whether it's a human being, you know, everything you do in this life, if you look at it as a project, at the end of the day, it becomes successful. So I, I do that in, you know, gearing to become a, a university lecturer. But then right. along the way, I get a job at, at a good uh, organization. I worked for Safaricom for six years. So as I was doing my master's, I was also working. So I had money. I actually just had money. And I was young and married. I didn't have goals. I didn't have many things calling for my money. I wish it was today. So uh, I take that course. I and, and as I'm working, I was working in different departments. So I didn't have like a single department that I would say I'm an accountant or I'm this and that. But now I focused my energy, my energies to go work in the learning and development department at Safaricom because that's what I loved doing. I loved teaching grown-ups, my colleagues, my what. So I go teach there, get excited, and I work in many other departments. I get very excited dealing with customers, the difficult ones, the nice ones, all of them. I, I just love them the same. So at some point I discover I have a gift of delivering knowledge and helping impacting people using knowledge. I, I loved looking at my colleagues saying, oh my God, thank you so much for making that clear. I didn't understand it at the beginning. Now I get it. You laid it so well. The journey was so interesting. And so I, I, I cultivated that. At some point I, you know, life I just figured I needed to leave. I wasn't fired. You know, people keep asking me, Daniel, were you fired from that company? No, I wasn't. I, I resigned. So I resigned and I thought to myself, I want to run a training company because that's what I was doing the last time I was, I was employed and I enjoyed it. So I started a training company and um, so I start learning. So now you asked me what interested me and what took me to this. I realize that we struggle so much, especially those of us who have professional knowledge. We come from well-organized companies, well-structured companies. You, your job is to just come sit on a chair and deliver results. However, when you get out of you know, <laughs> the working space, you have to figure out so many things. You have to join so many dots for, for it to make sense. So then I discovered most people don't usually know where do I start. I'm leaving work. I want to leave work. I want to start something. Where do I start? Uh, so uh, at some point I discover it. I'm actually earning from my knowledge because what I knew where I was working, I started doing it. At that point, I didn't know I was earning from my knowledge. I just thought I, I thought I was keeping on with what took me to Safaricom. But I hired coaches, I got into coaching, and one of my coaches actually opened my eyes to let me see that this knowledge that you gained from this company that you worked for for six and a half years is what should propel you in life. It's amazing, it's superior, it's, um, it's awesome. So you're not gonna sit on this knowledge you will put it into a structured um, something, into a structured company, into a structured program, and this is what will pay you. So I sit down, 
get that knowledge out of my head. There are many people with knowledge, amazing knowledge, but lifting it from the head to the table is the problem, the journey in between. So I get my knowledge out, package it into a training program, package it into a coaching program, and I start earning. And the first day I earned from my knowledge, you know, like helping people walk through the journey of transitioning, I couldn't really believe it. My first gig, I charged $500. I wish it was this day when $500 was too much, but it was around 55000 thereabout. I really couldn't believe that. Oh, someone paid me to speak to them and show them what to do. I will do this again. So that journey uh, took me to discovering that you cannot. However, that was a good gig. The next many gigs that I got into, most, I didn't get paid. Then I started discovering I am driving to the venue. I talked to someone for two hours. They go implement the results of my knowledge. They start earning and they make a big business. And I go home empty-handed. The next time a school calls me, I speak to the students. They start behaving themselves. I go home with a thank you letter. The next time a corporate calls me to go motivate their staff in the morning, they buy me a big basket. You know that fruit basket thing? One day I was like, wait what's going on like mm -hmm. until when when am i when is this gonna end when am i gonna have a check so i sat down uh you know go, went back to coaching got another coach and now actually got my things in order and i got a rate card got a program so when you lift your phone to call me i would tell you this is what i have to offer I have this program, I have this program, I have this one. Look at the um, content. What do you want to pick? I'm charging this much for this program. I'm charging this much for this program. Pick. Pick whatever picks your interest. So I get paid and um, I start sharing my experiences online. I start sharing my experiences with my friends. And they tell me, there are people misusing me. I want to sit down with you show me i want to do what you did so that i can also start getting paid so i start sitting with people and i tell them i'll charge you 500 dollars to show you what i did so that you can also get paid for you know whatever amount you want to charge that's your business so i get one people two people three people brother you know one person two three four five ten when i got to ten people i said there's something behind this i want to show others I think the other struggling with what I struggled with. So I started languaging that way. I started positioning myself as someone who can show you. I didn't call myself an expert or anything. I just say you are struggling with, you know, how to get paid for what you know. I think I know something that I can help you with. Let's sit yeah. and discuss. And it became popular. So it's it's been eight years. So now we are not where we were at the beginning. We are way, we are far, far, way far. That is quite an interesting journey. And uh, I, I, that is, there are so many nuggets right there. Um, I would say I've seen this uh, interesting comment from uh, Sophia and she asked, can knowledge be managed? Okay, anyway, we'll get to the questions. This was just to say, if you did it, uh, we are following this conversation. If you have any question, feel free to drop in the chat. We'll have Betty going through all the um, questions that you have, and then we will get to you. Maybe what I would want to know right now. Um, I'm sure happy worked in this space. There are certain misconceptions that people might have about monetizing your knowledge. Um, what are some of the common misconceptions that you've seen, and how can someone? actually try to overcome this uh, misconception. Thank you, Daniel. Yes, of course, there are misconceptions that I've seen and I've come across and I've heard from my clients. And one of the greatest misconceptions I've, I've, I've experienced is people thinking that what they know is not as important as it should be. Or someone thinking to themselves, 
who will pay me for this? Why would they pay me for? Why would anyone pay me for knowing how to do what I should know how to do? You get my point? Yes, yes, yes. For example, an accountant thinking, why should someone pay me for showing them how to do record keeping? I mean, I should know how to do record. People should know how to do record keeping. Why should anybody pay me for this? So that's a misconception I've seen. Number two, misconception has been, I don't matter. Like, I'm not the right person to do this. There are people who do this. There are people who work for big companies. There are people who look, they look good. They sound good. They have this experience. I don't think I'm that person to, to get paid for this. The other misconception I've seen is people thinking that knowledge should be free. Knowledge should be free. If I get a degree and I get a job, I should get paid for doing that job. But if I sit with a coach or a consultant or a mentor, they should just tell me I go and implement without me paying them, it should be free. And because of that mindset, most people think because we are given for free wherever we get it from, I should not charge for it. Okay. Yeah, those are some of the main, main misconceptions I've seen about knowledge monetization. That is quite interesting. Um, yesterday, I was traveling, I was listening to a podcast and I think one of the things that was mentioned, uh, one of the person who was talking was that the first time he was paid to, I think he was doing something that he was an expert in or it was his knowledge, mm -hmm. he felt like, uh, I can't believe it that I've been paid just to do that. And as you say, most people feel like, will someone actually pay me because I've helped them do the keeping? Now, to you, it might look very simple because probably that is the area that you have been gifted in or now you have the talent or you have the knowledge, you spent years to build up on that and it is too obvious and easy for you. But you yes. don't know from the other side because that is not the areas of uh, the area of expertise, it's not the area of genius, they're like, oh my God, this person just saved uh, my work. And I think that came in uh, very strongly as you say. Don't think like the information is just for free. I can give you, oh, you just get the right example when you talked about accounting. I saw this comment, a CPA person, I think, just say, that's where I am. And actually, from a personal perspective, I in my company, I hired now an external company to do accounting for me. It was driving me crazy when I was doing it myself. But when I get this person, of course, I am paying them. I'm like hallelujah, they saved my world, and probably to them, it's just they're wondering. I'm just doing ABCD anyway. That is quite uh, interesting to connect the dots. I would want to know from you, yeah. I know we are in this space or in this time where we don't lack any information, there's a lot of information yeah. around us, however, there's still an opportunity still for you to position yourself as an expert based on the kind of knowledge that you have. There is nothing that can replace you, even if you have a hundred accountants, there is something that is unique about you. So how, how can individuals stand out and effectively market their expertise so that they can really have a successful knowledge business? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for asking me that question. And I'm glad you did because it's a bother to many people. And, and a lot of people keep thinking to themselves, why would anybody pay me for information they can find on YouTube for free? Why would anybody pay me for information they can find on Facebook, TikTok, wherever for free? And I have, over the years, and, and this has come from, you know, experiencing customers and working with them. And I'll say this, there are three categories of people when it comes to knowledge monetization. Category number one, there are people who have no idea that they can monetize that 
professional knowledge they have acquired over the years. They have no idea. Like, they just think it's good knowledge, good to have. Some of them even lose their jobs and they continue searching for jobs. You know, let's say you get fired, you know, maybe you lose it, or COVID or something, you lose your job as a lecturer in the university. Your university is not able to pay salaries, so you guys are laid off. That person does not see the value of the 10 years they have been teaching. They do not think about creating curriculums. They do not think about managing this and that. They do not think about this knowledge that I've gained over the years from interacting with students, interacting with my colleagues, new knowledge that has come over the years. They never see I can package this and sell it as an online course. Or I can write an ebook and sell that ebook you know daniel there are guys minting millions of money with ebooks mm -hmm. i i have an ebook called activate and Mon i have written a book i'm an author so i turned my physical i sell physical books though i don't like selling physical books i love selling ebooks my mm -hmm. ebook activate and monetize your potential ebook sells there's a funnel that sells it on facebook I don't sell it on Instagram. I just sell it on uh, Facebook. I do. It's a funnel that was created. I pay ads. It sells itself. That book costs a thousand bob Kenya shillings. At least weekly, I get ten people to buy that book. I don't concentrate on that book. I don't sell it. I don't talk about it on my things. It sells. Once I have some bills to pay with it, would. I mean, you may, it, it's very good money if you ask me. Like, it is helping me. And I'm not even serious about it. There are people who wake up every day to sell their ebook with all the energy they have. If I'm not paying a lot of attention and I can sell 10 copies in a week, there's a guy selling 100 copies. 100 copies in a week. That person, Anafanya Kazi. So, there's that person who doesn't see that this knowledge they have gained over the years can earn them comfortably, can give them money that is able to sort out their bills, probably even better than where they were working. Then there's that other person who knows they have knowledge they've acquired over the years, which can pay them, but they do not know how. They just know, I have this knowledge. It disturbs me. I want to share it with the world. I want to help someone transform their lives. I just don't know how this thing is done. They don't know the, the, the framework, the blueprint, the A to B to C. That one, they do not know how it's done. Then there's person number C, who knows that they have knowledge that can earn them lots of money. They even know how to do it they know how to write an ebook probably they have written that ebook they know how to do an online course probably they have done an, an online course they know how to package um a checklist they know how to do workbooks they know how to do you know designs like canva designs they know how to do all that however they do not take action because of one or two, three reasons. They know those two things, they, they, are, they are good. They know they are really good. They know they can do this and that, but they are not doing it. That is category number three. They are not doing it because they are afraid of failing. They are afraid of rejection. They are afraid of who will buy my ebook. Who would even bother to remove their wallet to swipe the card for me? Who do I think I am? Who do I think I Like, why am I rating myself so highly? There is that category of people. And another one thinking, I tried to sell an ebook for a whole month. Only two people bought. I don't want that embarrassment. So I'm not getting back there. Or I came up with a coaching program. Or I became a consultant. And in a whole year, only one of my friends, you know, they paid me 100000 as a consultant. And that was it. So we have those three categories of people. So in as much as there's so much information online, offline, there's not a, this age, people can know anything they want to know. It's online. However, people will rarely take action because of those reasons that I've said. So where do you come in? You come in, first of all, because you are aware 
that you can help that group of people that doesn't know what to do, then you come in helping that group of people that knows what to do, but then they are not doing it. And you come and hold them or just create awareness or, you know, create accountability for them. And number three, um, what, how do I say this so that it doesn't come out as braggadocia? Number three is people will really... People like to people like to benchmark. They they don't want to fail at first. They want has Daniel done it? He started a YouTube channel. It is working. What did he do? People don't want to jump into things. Then they fail as first timers. They want another person to fail. Then they mm -hmm. can they can ride on that. You know they failed. Yes. What did they do to fail this and this? I don't want to do that. I want to do what they did to succeed. And the last one for me, because I know a lot of things, I like to pay for access. So those people who have packaged their knowledge nicely and they know what they are doing, I might know that thing. I might even know what they are doing. But I want to pay for access. I want to be in their circles. I want to know what's new, what's trending. How do they do this? And in any case, we are not the same. We are very different. How Coach Betty will deliver topic A? Same topic. Me and you, Daniel, will be given a topic. How I will yeah. deliver my topic is not the same way you'll deliver the same topic. Yeah. So you pay for access. You pay for networking. You pay for new things. You pay for easier life. Because surely, why would you want to be so tired and making so many mistakes when someone else already made the mistake? So for those people feeling... No one would pay me because information is free. Please, today know this. People don't like to take action, especially when they are not sure. So you come in, you give them, you know, you, are, you assure them, give them accountability. Condense their learning time. So instead of someone taking 10 years to learn, they take one year to, because you have to take time to learn and you have to make your own mistakes. It doesn't mean because Coach Betty is coaching you. You will not make mistakes. You need to make your own mistakes. But instead of spending six years making mistakes, you only spend one year making mistakes, learning and moving on. Quite interesting. I like that. Um, and so many other people are following and really are happy and engaging in this conversation. I can see Florida uh, saying this is a very, uh, this is a nice conversation. Interesting. Thank you very much, Florida. I can see another one here, great topic, especially for an employee planning for the next season of uh, self-employment on the options available to monetize the knowledge and acquire. Thank you very much, Magdalene. I think there's one comment here, but um, I would like to uh, maybe read it and have, see you how you address it. Yeah? This Betlomeo, he's asking, kindly, can you advise on academic writing? I have tried to open an account without success. I doubt what we are talking here is about the academic writing. Probably you know about it. Um, and to me, that might not be what we are discussing, monetizing the knowledge. This is just being employed, but only being employed online. And most people really confuse sometimes offering products and services and monetizing your knowledge and some of these online jobs, which, what what is your take on that? I would want to hear from uh, you, Betty. Um, I think online earning or earning from your online presence has been mistaken to mean academic writing. And I'm not saying academic writing is wrong, but I think personally I've, I've earned online for the last five years, right before COVID and now after COVID, fully online. I've earned online, you know, properly. I must say that. I've never, I don't even know how to create a, a accounts for academic writing. That is not what earning online means. Earning online means many more things. For example, I think 70% of my coaching clients come from my online presence. They see me online, they see me sharing free knowledge, good quality knowledge. I share it for free. 
I tell them, I feel, you know, the, I learned this in my coaching session. You can practice if you, you, if you want, if it's going to be useful. Go do it. So with time, we become, you know, my page becomes like a school they can come to and learn very good information. I share freely. I give it out there. Whoever wants to implement on their own, it's okay. Whoever feels like they need my help, they will always reach out. So that way I am from my online presence. I have products, I have online courses, I have an ebook, I have things that I do online. And I get clients online. And I don't do academic writing. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't even have advice on it because I've never practiced it. I'm not an expert. I don't know how it is done. The advice I have is on other things. Packaging your knowledge into digital products. I think let's put it that way. Packaging your knowledge into digital products. And some of the digital products I've sold personally is workshops. I sell workshops online. I announce on my page, on this and this date, we shall have a workshop. The name of the workshop is this and that and that. Pay this amount of money to this pay bill number. See you in class. And I have 20 people pay for a class, 30 people for a class, 50 people pay for a class. I give them login details. You know, I have people assisting me on the back. We learn for three days in the evening, 8 to 9, 8 to 9, 8 to 9, or 7.30 to 9. For three days, I give them work to go and do. We form a WhatsApp group. We become a community. So as we speak, I have more than 15 <laughs> WhatsApp groups with my tribe, people who like what I do. So once in a while, I'll announce a training. They will pay. They will show up. We learn online. But now I want to go back to physical events. But that's I'm just trying to explain how you can earn from your online presence. They will come and pay 10,000, 5,000, 2,000, whatever you want to charge, that, that's your business. But it actually, I see a lot of people thinking earning from your online presence means academic writing and forex. That is, you know, those are the misconceptions. They think it's forex <laughs> and academic yeah. writing. It is not. I, I thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I think this conversation is really striking a chord with many people. Um, if you can see up there the comments, Mutuku Kennedy is saying, been waiting for this for so long. Thanks for being here. Here, uh, here we go. As we continue saying the conversation is timely, especially in an, uh, an economic economy with various graduates seeking for jobs. It is necessary that we have uh, we are taught how to think business and earn from our knowledge. And a lot, a lot of um, maybe comments uh, coming in. I've seen uh, Alex just saying thanks, Coach Betty. How do you respond to those who request for assistance? Is the help training by staff topic? I think you had mentioned uh, that, but quickly, maybe you can respond to that and we can be able to proceed. Uh, it, it really depends with what um, uh, Alex needs. We will share my number and we'll share my Facebook pages. By the way, for me, I treat social media as very official. If you reach out to me in my inbox, it is very official. It's not a joke. We discuss business. We agree. So it really depends with what you want. And share my number that you can uh, reach out or you can inbox me wherever. DM me, Instagram, wherever you see my name. Straight up, DM me. We'll speak. For sure, for sure. Maybe last question on my side. Um, maybe I would want you to share with us any memorable uh Maybe success story you have had. Thank you very much for sharing your story. And we can see, yes, you are benefiting from the industry, but you have also helped others. Probably yeah. if there's any success story you can share with us and uh, what happened, what are the key factors that really made this person successful in the areas. You don't decide to mention names if you don't need to mention any numbers, but at least give us a, a success story you have. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, the other day I was trying to, to count all my students and I couldn't because there are so many. Uh -huh. I went to my folder. There's a folder I keep for testimonials. Every time someone sends me a testimonial, and this is a good practice for you who is a coach, a consultant, a speaker, any service provider. Anytime a client sends you testimonials, either as a WhatsApp message, an email, an SMS, a comment on your um, post.
posts or on your Facebook, screenshot that, save it in your file folder because you will need it someday. Like now we are running a campaign and I'm just having to go to my folder, just, you know, extract the testimonials. It's stronger when it's coming from another person saying, Coach Betty helped me do this and that and that. So I was looking at the testimonials and saying, this, you know, just saying, Betty, well done. Okay. So there are many, but the most exciting one, and I'll say it because I see my client is currently having a class, and I actually saw it over the weekend, is just thinking how this guy who works for a um, media house, he works for one of these big three. We have three big, you know, three big media houses in this country. So he works there as an editor. So he comes and he calls me one day and says, Coach Betty, uh, I was given your number by, I think it's Coach Irene who gave him us. It was Coach Irene. And this is what I'm looking for. I want, I have this passion. I want to help others write like I do, but I don't know how to do it. So we have a conversation and I tell him, there's a program I teach. It's called the Activate and Monetize Your Potential Program. I tell him, join AMP. We call it AMP. Join AMP. You, it's an online course. You will learn on your own. You know, you log in. You find the course. There are modules. There are worksheets. There's everything. I've done a nice course. So he asks, how much is it? And I tell him the price and he buys the course. Luckily, for that time, I was running a bonus. Whoever was buying that course at that particular point, I would offer them four, four classes. We would log in and they see me and we talk, they ask me questions, we discuss. So he's in that class. So we start working, I get them into a WhatsApp group. Long story short, he starts his own program that teaches other people how to become good opinion when i talk opinion writers opinion writers like people who write who write articles to the um, to nation to standard to you know whichever other media house so he starts that course and his journalist friends and colleagues join the class they want to know in fact they didn't join the class to know how to write they wanted to know how he was able to come up with a program. They couldn't see it. That's category number one of the people we were describing. So they wanted to know, how did you do this? So at some point he asked me, Coach Betty, how, should, how much should I charge for my class? I feel like I want to give it free for the... I told him, go straight up, charge 20000 for that class because you need to start somewhere. 20000 is for that amount of work. It's not much, but you can start somewhere. So he charges 20,000, very afraid. But I always tell people, do it afraid. So he charges 20K, a few people pay. The next time he charges, a few people. The next time the class keeps swelling and swelling and swelling. So that really excites me to see us creating out of nothing. I love that. One of the things I teach people is the business of their knowledge. You can have knowledge, but you do not know the business of that knowledge. What's the business side of your knowledge? So we sit down with the gentleman. We talk about the business side of his knowledge that he has acquired over the years. We practice the business. A course is born. He sits down and uh, records the course create modules for the course, create worksheets for the course, create a pricing uh, point for the course, advertises for that course. I keep helping him and clapping for him. Keep going, get a flyer out, keep sharing. Coach Betty, no one is commenting. Don't worry, keep sharing. I help him share the, the flyer as well. Let's share, let's go, let's keep going, keep going. It is not easy, but we will get there. So when I see his class get... You know, people sign up for his class today. Sometimes it's unbelievable for me. I get so excited when I see my students with courses out there. And I keep telling them, thank you for pushing me out of my comfort zone. Now I should leave you to have your own clients at this level so that 
I can move to the next level and I help you move to the next level, we keep moving. And I think that is the best segue for us to discuss. There is an upcoming event that is on uh, next, uh, this uh, coming, let me share here. There we go. Knowledge Monetization Workshop, turning your knowledge into income and impact. Maybe I can give you a chance to tell us about this event, what uh, people should expect as they come in, and yeah. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Daniel, for giving me an opportunity to talk about this event. I said we are going back now to physical events. We've been doing a lot of online events, but I want to do um, a physical workshop at the Radisson Blue Hotel Upper Hill on the 26th of August, next Saturday, but one. Not this coming Saturday, the other Saturday. That's not the news. The news is, this time round, I have carefully selected speakers who have been through the journey of the three people that I described. I described person number one, person number two, person number three. So I've selected speakers who have been through the journey and monetized their knowledge. If we look at, you know, a quick look on, on the flyer, Kezi Mukiri is an advocate of the high court, but Kezi is the founder Ignite Trade Africa. If you've seen mice events around Sarit, wherever big malls, that is Kezi. And she's also the founder of Mokiri Global Advocate. But aside from that, I've known Kezi because of her business, helping Africans to put together their brains and start businesses. That's how I have known Kezi. Then we have Ruben. Ruben worked for a big company. He'll talk ab about it when we, 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 we do the event. But he was a professional. Now, he's the CEO of Username. If you watch Citizen TV at around 9, that company that advertises their primetime news, they're doing good in the, um, you know, in, in the real estate. They are called Username Investment. So he's now the CEO and the founder. How did he come from getting employed as, I think he was an engineer, into real estate? How did that happen? Then, of course, we have Coach Irene Muridi, who will help us with... Um, you know, mentorship and coaching and building communities and partnership and collaborations. How do you do that? Because the easiest way to monetize your knowledge is to collaborate with others. The way I'm collaborating with you, Dan uh, Daniel, and the way I collaborate with other people, that's the easiest route. Coach will help us do that. Then we have Amos Ngaho. Uh, Amos is the founder of Money Clinic or Money Gossip or Money Talks. He's doing very, very well in that industry. How did he transition from employment into monetizing his financial literacy knowledge? When you hear him giving his story, you will laugh. It wasn't intentional. He found himself, then he made it into a business. And of course, for people employed who already are People who haven't quit already, they are still employed. We'll have Dr. Susan Mambo. Uh, Dr. Susan is still uh, at JQuart. She's a senior lecturer there. The ministry, uh, of, you know, he, she's in public health. But Susan also does consulting on the side. How does she balance that? How did she find herself as a consultant? And how does she do that? Sorry, we have a new flyer. Uh, I think I hadn't shared it with you. Still, we will have Regina Ray Gitao. For those of us who uh, back then watched a lot of TV, Regina Ray is a media personality, but she also runs a coaching program. How has she been able? You know Regina Ray, Daniel? Yes, I know her. Actually, I hosted her while I was starting by channel work, but I think it is 2020. Yeah, somewhere there. But we are yeah. in the same group called League of Young Professionals. Anyway, yeah, I know her. Super. We will have Regina Ray in the room and we'll have other amazing speakers. We couldn't fit everybody into the flyer. So this event, what is in it for you? You know, come learn from those who've been there, done that. Come network, come ask questions. You will, in fact, the biggest part of that event will be a Q&A. What are your fears? What do you want to hear? How have they done it? Come learn those stories. So I am planning that by the time that event is over in the evening, it's going to start at 11 and end at 4, we'll have people leave that room 
and they can start earning from the professional knowledge they've earned over the years. They can go pack it. They can have the courage to actually say, pay me for my work. We'll no longer have people get invited to go speak in big congregations. Then you are given envelope. You know, 3,000 Kenya shillings, it can't even start. Your car cannot start at that amount these days. You will not go to a petrol station, you pay 3K, and you, are, you know, the empty tank, it will not, it will keep empty. So at least let them pay for your fuel and the energy and the sweat. So those bahashas for 3K, we are going to refuse them. But we cannot refuse them if we have not built capacity. So I would like to help as many people as possible to package their knowledge, put it into a nice sellable format. How do you do that? And then you can start demanding or asking for a pay. I know a lot of people want to have a rate card, but they do not know how to arrive at a rate card. Come learn on that day. So that's what is going to be up. We are giving it at um, an almost free. Eh? Imagine it's only 10,000. We are going to have very good lunch, very good meals, and good speakers. It is not a money-making event, this one, if you think about it deeply. I just want to come back into the physical space and now i'll decide how much i'll be charging for those events depending with the value that we bring on the table but for this one it's just a comeback we have good lunch we have good food and then we can um we can we can network and i also want to hear testimonials from that event how yeah. are people getting paid what you are I really appreciate it. I posted the, uh, the links um, on Facebook. You can follow Coach Betty on Facebook. The link is in the comments. You can also get to know more about the workshop itself. I've also put uh, the link right there. I think knowledgemonetization.org slash monetization workshop. You can get more and more information there. And um, I, I would also want to agree. I think there's a comment here I saw. Um, which is very much possible. Yeah, Judy was saying, should you earn more in your second job for the knowledge and result in, and result in previous jobs? Probably what I got when I read it. Maybe she might be asking, is it possible to earn more from this second thing about monetizing your knowledge than in your main job? What do you think, Coach Betty? Or what do you understand? Let me try. I don't know what you understand by the question. I think that is how I've interpreted it. Should you earn more in your second job for the knowledge and results in your previous job or something like that? I think she's asking that that's how I've understood it. Should yes. you should you leave your job for a higher pay? You know, basically, like or should you do parallel? Zinaitangwa parallel movement. Yeah, you just you move both of them until one goes over the other. I think that is the common advice. If this one goes over this, then you can easily drop the weight uh, mm -hmm. on the employment or something. Yeah, for me, I feel, and this is my personal opinion. I'm not in HR. If I was in HR, I would say just move. You will grow on your way. You know to you know you'll grow and start earning more. But for me. Mm -hmm. Since I treat knowledge as gold, and I know knowledge is a new gold, and there's a new world order where people are getting paid for the knowledge they have acquired over the years, I would want to imagine that my, my knowledge that I've gained in this previous position, especially if I was serious about growing my knowledge, some people are not. Some people are just like a bicycle. They never take up courses. They never read books. They don't watch important uh, things on YouTube. They don't do nothing to grow their knowledge. But if you've been intentional on growing your knowledge, I feel like you should. It should. It, it should stand for something. It should stand for something. But that now calls for good negotiation skills. Those are things we teach in corporate uh, training you know, negotiation skills, how to, you know, show what it is that you are bringing on the table and uh, stand up for your results so that at least it can earn you much, much, much more. I really appreciate Thank you very much. Um, we're almost getting to the top of the hour. I can see Christopher there saying lovely conversation. I really appreciate ladies and gentlemen. Can we show some love to Coach Betty in the um, comments below? If there's something that you have learned, please 
in a as snapshot or a word or a phrase. Drop that in the chat. Let's thank um, Coach Nancy for joining us. And as I go to the last thing, what are your parting shots? I wouldn't want us to go beyond uh, the hour. So maybe you can give us uh, your parting shot or what is your last word in terms of uh, this knowledge monetization uh, business. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. My last uh, parting shot would be your knowledge matters. You just need to know the business of your knowledge. If you don't know that bit, you are going to be taken advantage of. People will call you. They will talk to you for two hours. And because you are brilliant, you have amazing knowledge. You will pour your heart, your mind, your kidneys, and everything. And by the time you leave that table, the bright ones and the quick ones will take that solution you have offered them, and they are going to implement without compensating you they will just buy you lunch you know two thousand bob and that's it and you will have cheapened your knowledge so very much i would also like just to say um i'll, I'll answer you oscar a quick one but i just want to say with knowledge the reason why people really don't take it seriously your knowledge it's because it's all over the place it is not harnessed it's not in one place you cannot show someone this is what i do so if someone is asking you daniel what do you do oh you know um in this um i was an accountant i was a doctor you know then i left work you do not have one quick sentence to say i help high achievers get paid for their knowledge or i help high achievers increase their income by at least a thousand dollars per month that's it that's what I do within this short period of time. So Oscar asks, good evening, leader. I'm Oscar Lawrence. I started building course technology as a course. Oh, I'm reading it um, as a course, but get a job with it is very difficult in my local. Please help me. All right. Um, if it's very difficult to get a job in that um, uh, you know, area, Oscar, as you look for a job, I would suggest, and also to any other person, this is the age where you learn high income skills as you wait to get a job you can teach yourself high income skills pretty fast because i know you have a sharp brain and most of them are even free on linkedin they are free on youtube they are free daniel you can share those free uh, you know places that they teach high income skills copywriting sales you can learn uh, social media management you can learn all those other things but apart from that, maybe there's a business in this uh, building technology. I don't know it, unfortunately. If I knew what was, what was the curriculum, I would have helped. But I'm wondering if you can start, start sharing your knowledge online. Start sharing your knowledge on LinkedIn based on what you learned in school. Start showing yourself as someone who understands this industry. Start showing that you know what is in building technology. People who are interested, Coach Betty will not look at it because she's not there and she doesn't know what it means. But there's a guy who knows about building technology. There is an employer looking for a guy. I can tell you that for sure. There's someone looking for a graduate in building technology. But because you are quiet on LinkedIn and Facebook and maybe you are laughing at memes and you know, you are not telling educators, bring knowledge online. Tell us what do you understand by building technology? What are some of the things to look out for? What does this mean? Start conversations around there. You will get an interested person to, to hire you if that's what you want. You want a job. For sure, for sure. Let me just even just uh, bring it in right now. Personally, I also am a product or I am a beneficiary of monetizing my knowledge, right? Uh, most of the things that I do online, um some again some of them i didn't even learn in school or anywhere i learned them online i knew how to monetize and one way i can be able to help you that was oscar if you're looking for a job one of the things that we do is to help you sell yourself we can help you start with a cv writing so getting a free cv review that's why i'm displaying that just write it somewhere at earpoint.co.ke forward slash cv review and this will just be helping you in terms of how are you selling yourself I will look at your CV and tell you, this is what the employer is seeing, this is what you can change, this is what you can do, 
and all that. So we do traceability. But that is not to take away from there might be now the other side of how do you monetize that knowledge in building a technology, uh, building technology. Yeah? So those are two different uh, things. There's, when you're looking for a job, you also need to sell what you know in that space and how the employer sees is a good way. And then if you want now to turn it again into a business, there's that knowledge that you have and there's someone who needs that knowledge. Anyway, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It has been a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, can we blow the chat with some um, comments? I can see someone saying I came in late, but this is a great conversation. Knowledgeable ideas, that is from the mayor of Lawrence joining us. Pasha, I think that is it. I really appreciate Coach Betty. It has been a great conversation. Make sure you follow her on Facebook, on her website. Oh, and her number. I think I got your number if they want to get in touch with you directly. There you go. 0703. 806038. That's it, right? That's it. Thank you very much. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, let me end this broadcast now and I'll see you next time.